the plot is completely predictable. We also get one of those really unfortunate sequences in games where the lead seems like he should have been able to get out of that situation easily. Someone points a gun at you in a cutscene and says, don't even think about it, I'm faster than I look, completely forgetting the fact that you can deflect bullets. This makes plenty of use of the Wiimote. You get to be a safe cracker. Some of the switches you pull, you have to turn in certain directions and hold there for a little while before you activate them. And except for when it gets really annoying with the Wii Motion Plus calibration, safe cracking is a lot of fun. You turn the entire Wii Mote and try to listen for it clicking. The click will come from the Wii Mote itself, and then you press A to to deactivate that particular lock. And once you've done all of them, there'll be three or four, the entire safe will be open and you'll get cash. This has a couple of pretty epic battles. Some of them are boss battles. Other than the game itself making fun of just how repetitive it is, there's really no humor in this. This needs cold reboots more often than any other game I've played on the Wii console. In order to try to hide when you're loading from one area to the next, you're always opening these large doors that obscure the entire screen. And while I appreciate the effort, here it gets kind of annoying because at times it feels like you're doing it constantly. Completing the game doesn't seem to get you anything other than the ability to replay any earlier chapter in a challenge mode, which you can already do just by completing that chapter. Once you've completed chapter one, you can do the challenge of chapter one, and the only thing you'll get is apparently more cash in the game, not in real life. In addition to rushing at the enemy, you also use the A button to climb, open doors, and jump. Now, while the climbing and the jumping are as cinematic and immersive as the rest of the game, they are still overly streamlined here. You have no control over how fast you climb or how far you jump. You will always make the jump. You can't accidentally jump short and, you know, die from it. And while I guess some will be happy that they don't have to worry about this, it also just takes away the tension of that. I mean, you're never in any danger of falling. The only way you can die in this is by being defeated by an enemy and or standing too close to an explosion, I guess. And, you know, I mean, if you don't want to be challenged, why are you playing a video game? I should perhaps note, the game is challenging. Anyway, the jump, I mean, they did this with Avatar, and for that I could understand, because that was a rushed, licensed game. On this, they had enough time, I would imagine. I mean, it doesn't otherwise feel rushed. Yes, the Motion Plus attachment does change the balance of the overall Wii mode, but you get used to it. And yes, this wears you out, and I wouldn't personally play more than an hour, an hour and a half, without resting my arms and wrists. But that's the fun of it. It's immersive. You feel like you're battling enemies with a sword. How badass is that? And no, there is genuinely no connection to the first in this. It's another installment in the franchise, that's it. The core concept, you know, an unnamed hero who's got guns and a sword, fighting to avenge, something to do with people he cared about, and, you know, something Asian. That's about it. This does have the tag option, like in the first, where you can tag enemies and then really fast fire at all of them, but it's much more limited. For example, I don't think you can tag certain body parts the way you could in the first, and you kind of have to fire off a shot before you can start tagging, so it's kind of awkward. To get missions, you're constantly returning to the dojo. I don't know, maybe the hero has abandonment issues or something. And there you go to the wall, and that will give you your next mission. 
or missions. Essentially, the game consists of you walking from point A to point B, and then pressing a switch, or defeating an enemy, or picking something up, rinse and repeat. What makes it fun is that you get to slash with your sword at anything and anyone as you travel from point A to point B, and use your guns, which and those can also be quite helpful. Oh, and do note that no matter how much you might love the guns in this, you have to use the sword. Not always, not against every single enemy, but I would say against the majority and certainly against the bosses. If you want a game for the Wii that lets you feel like you are really fighting with the sword, this is the one to get. And just to qualify my opinion on this matter. In addition to trying this game and the first Red Steel, I've also tried Sonic and the Black Knight, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, Samurai Wars Katana, Tenchu Shadow Assassins, and if you want to count it, Prince of Persia Rival Swords. Now if I have missed any sword play games for the Wii, please drop me a note and let me know. I love these games. If you're not terribly interested in the sword play aspect of this game, I'm not sure there's really anything in it for you. I guess you might enjoy the first-person shooter aspect, but let's be honest, as far as that goes, this is hardly the best on the market. Anyway, that was my spoiler review of Red Steel 2. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.